So the other day I made a poll in the community tab asking what is the biggest obstacle you guys face as students? And out of the options, procrastination, money, staying healthy, relationships and other, with 17,000 votes in 24 hours, the most common answer by far was procrastination with a massive 76%. And some of you in the comments even replied all of the above. So I'm sorry for you guys, but after seeing those poll results, I was like, yeah, I need to make a video on procrastination. I want to address the single most common problem that you guys are facing and by the end of this video you should have a far better chance at significantly reducing how much you procrastinate throughout the day. Right now I'm one-on-one -on -one coaching dozens of students in the Transform Your Grades course. The entire course is centered around how to drastically improve your productivity and decrease your procrastination, essentially leveling up your studying and your grades. There's a link in the description below to find out more but for this video these are the strategies that I use if I'm feeling like I want to procrastinate or if I'm feeling like I am procrastinating and I need to kind of shake myself out of it. We all have this incredible mental tool that we've been honing in for years, the tool of self-deception. So when we're procrastinating on YouTube, for example, we'll say to ourselves, just one more video, right? Or if we're playing video games on our phone, we'll say just five more minutes, right? How many times have you told yourself that? Because when we're doing something we like doing, like procrastinating on our phone, we're getting those little hits of dopamine that keep us addicted and going from getting those dopamine hits to then going to studying it seems like such a big deal right so then we use this tool of self-deception that we've been honing for years so instead of saying just five more minutes when you're procrastinating you turn it around and you say just five more minutes of studying and suddenly your studying doesn't seem that daunting and this is the concept of the minimum viable action we often procrastinate because we build up fears and friction relating to our perception of how difficult an activity will be but all we have to do is commit to the smallest possible action and that will get the ball rolling. So for example, if I had to write a 3000 word assignment, it can feel quite intimidating at first, but then I'd just say to myself, I'll just write 100 words, right? That's it, just 100 words. And naturally, once I had written those 100 words, I'd kind of gotten into the flow of writing, so then I'd just continue writing. In fact, I just recently used this trick about six weeks ago. I'm in Vietnam right now, and this whole corona situation here is getting worse and worse. So a few weeks ago, there was a government lockdown, meaning that all the non-essential shops are closed. So gyms, bars, restaurants, that kind of thing. They've all been closed. I go to the gym at least five days a week and I've built it into a strong habit. I don't skip gym days. I'm pretty good with that. But since the gym's closed, that habit is kind of been thrown out the window because instead of going to the gym I had to kind of work out at home which I'll be honest with you I don't particularly like working out at home so I use the concept of minimum viable action to kind of push me into making that first step so I said to myself okay just 10 press-ups that's it and you know 10 press-ups are pretty easy it only takes about 15 seconds but once I did those 10 press-ups then I suddenly didn't find exercising at home that bad so I continued for another 20 or 30 minutes and this trick is particularly particularly useful for when you're in the process of building up new habits. So that was a few weeks ago. I was really unmotivated when it came to working out at home. But now that I've been exercising at home every day for the last 30 days and I've not skipped a single day, it just took that initial push at the beginning to build up that momentum. And now that that habit is formed, it's really easy now. In fact, I actually made a whole video last month on what I do to stay productive when I feel unmotivated. You can click up here on the pop-up banner above to watch it. And I remember reading months ago now, maybe a year ago or maybe more, there was a research study that tried to look at procrastination and how it manifests in people's brains. So how procrastination affects the brain's activity and feelings. And the study showed that the level of anxiety is really high at the stage where in your mind you're debating whether or not you should continue to procrastinate or whether or not you should get to work. But then once the participants made that decision to stop procrastinating and start working, their anxiety levels dropped significantly to the point where it almost disappeared. So using the concept of minimum viable action is one of the main methods I use to overcome procrastination. But now let's go over six other actionable steps to train yourself to fight against procrastination. Step one, be aware of when you're procrastinating. This is super, super, super important. In order 
to fix a problem, you first need to realize that you have a problem in the first place, right? It's really easy for us to procrastinate for a long time without even realizing that we're actually procrastinating because we're so preoccupied in the activity that we're procrastinating with. So as soon as you realize that you're procrastinating, you need to take a clear actionable step and stand up from your desk for a minute to break the cycle and kind of jolt you out of this mental state of procrastination. Step two, be aware of your emotions. Try to look at your feelings like you're observing yourself from outside. So it's interesting because what you'll realize with procrastination is that it's basically just a fear. And procrastination comes as a result of your body triggering a fight or flight response. So over millions of years, our brain has kind of programmed to avoid potential danger and ensure survival. It still thinks we live in tribes where being good enough to be part of the tribe was essential for survival. Furthermore, our brain doesn't distinguish between what's real danger and what's unrealistic danger. It's why many of us have phobias of spiders, even spiders that are completely harmless. Or many of us have a fear of flying, even though traveling by plane is the safest form of transport. There are in many ways irrational fears because our brain is still programmed for survival. We have the same fears when it comes to procrastination. If we feel like we're doing a bad job with a complex task, it triggers a kind of fight or flight response where our brain is trying to keep us safe. So if you're facing a task that you're dreading, for example, writing a 5,000 word assignment or revising for an upcoming exam, subconsciously you might fear the task is too difficult and that you might fail. And this triggers the emotional response of fight or flight in which your brain naturally chooses flight, which by law of survival means you try to avoid it at all costs. This results in procrastination. So you really need to be aware of this whole process and the emotions that you're feeling at the very point that you're procrastinating. Step three, be aware of your inner dialogue. Start to pay attention to the excuses you give yourself when you need to study, but you're trying to find reasons not to. So in your mind, you're trying to keep procrastinating. Our brain is really good at tricking us into kind of manipulating us into doing something that will benefit us in the very short term, but that is very very damaging in the long term. So for example, when your alarm goes off but you don't want to wake up yet, so you hit the snooze button. And before you hit that snooze button, you weigh up the pros and cons in your head. And even though deep down you know that you should wake up straight away, somehow your brain kind of tricks you into hitting the snooze button and continue sleeping. We need to be aware of this and realize that the excuses that we're telling ourselves are exactly that, just excuses. Step four. Remember that procrastination is a choice. Just because your brain is telling you to procrastinate, it doesn't mean that you have to procrastinate. So being able to override what you're thinking is an incredibly powerful thing to do. When your brain is telling you to do one thing, but you know that it's not the right thing to do, so you don't do it. It's incredibly liberating. It's why having an ultra cold shower in the morning is so popular in the personal development space, because it trains your body to override what your brain is telling it. So your brain is telling you not to have a cold shower, is saying that you should turn the hot water on and be comfortable, right? But your body overrides those thoughts and you do it anyway. Step five, break the task down. Break up the task that you need to do into smaller steps to make it less overwhelming. So for example, I mentioned at the beginning of the video taking advantage of the concept of minimum viable action, which takes away a lot of that fear and anxiety that is often the underlying cause of procrastination. So instead of saying, I need to write a 5,000 word assignment, instead you can break it down into saying, I need to write 500 words for 10 days. It's very likely that on the first day that you write 500 words, you'll catch that momentum and you'll continue writing a lot more than that. Your main goal here should be to make it as easy as possible to get started so the task doesn't feel that intimidating anymore. Step six, start and keep going. The hardest part to breaking the cycle of procrastination is to start the task that you need to do, right? So once you've started that task, it suddenly won't feel as overwhelming. So once you've started, you need to keep going. And there are multiple ways that you can do this. So firstly, now this is fairly obvious. Remove all distractions around you. Turn your phone off, put it in another room, or use your phone productively by downloading an app like Focus To Do that will, once you start the timer, there's a feature that will lock your phone so you can't procrastinate on it. Set yourself a rigid study plan so you know exactly 
exactly what needs to be done each day or set yourself two or three goals that you need to achieve. So being able to beat procrastination is an incredibly liberating feeling when you have the power and control of your state of mind so you're no longer slaves to the destructive habits that are damaging you long term. It's an incredibly empowering mindset to have. And a few weeks ago I made a video on how I recovered when I lost all motivation. You can click on the video on the screen. Alternatively I made a video on how I stay productive when I'm feeling unmotivated. Again click on the video on the screen. Both videos have similar titles but they're both very different. There's some really helpful practical strategies on what I did to pick myself up from the productivity slump I was experiencing. So whichever one you choose I'll see you over there.